Hello, friends. Welcome to A Skeptic's Journey. I'm your host, Mike Guaneri. Today we have a very special guest. He was the chosen chief of the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids for many years. He's an author, a teacher, a psychoanalyst, and I hope I'm not missing anything else. Um, please welcome Philip Cargam. Hi, Philip. How are you doing? Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for inviting me onto your show. Just a little detail. I'm not a psychoanalyst. I'm a oh. psychologist and a psychotherapist it's it's a little detail well, it's a little a different yeah my apologies yeah. that's okay yeah well first i want to thank you for taking the time out of i know your very busy schedule to join us today um and i guess we can get started off if you can tell everybody a little about yourself and how you got started on the path to druidry sure well when i when i was a kid um when i was 11 my dad always had a lot of people who are interested in different spiritualities around. He ran a, a magazine, a history magazine. So he had a lot of people used to come to the house and um, a lot of them were into various different spiritual paths. And he knew uh, a man called Christmas, unusual name, Christmas Humphreys. And uh, he founded the Buddhist Society in London. And um, sort of it, with this Buddhist influence, I ended up reading a book called The Life of the Buddha which told the story of the Buddha's part journey to enlightenment. And even though I was young, it really struck me that that was the most important thing to do, was to, to gain wisdom, to become enlightened. And in that same year, I met uh, a friend of his uh, who was called Ross Nichols, mm -hmm. who was the old yeah. chief druid in, in London. And uh, so, so he was a family friend. And then when I was 16, I became really intrigued by Druidry and asked if I could, you know, if I could learn, if I could apprentice to him. And uh, that's how it all started. Oh, great. Um, so you mentioned Druidry as a, uh, as kind of a spiritual path. Um, I think it's, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's fairly common knowledge that the original Druids are proto and proto Druids. Um, were pagans and almost viewed it more of a religion, not just a spiritual path. Um, in today's, in the time of today, do you see it as merely spiritual, religious, a combination of both, or each to his own? Well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I, I, in a way, each to his own, in as much as the term religion, for some people, is really um, appealing and gives them a sense of reassurance and direction and so on. And for other people, it's a complete turnoff. You know, they really don't like the term uh, because of religion's kind of checkered history, which we have to right. admit is pretty tricky over the centuries. Um, and so, you know, you get you start getting into, well, what do you mean by religion? What do you mean by spiritual path and so on? So, uh, you know, at, at, at a very simple level, it's often easier to talk about it as a spiritual path or a spiritual way. Um, but the reality is, amongst people who are drawn to this, some people consider their Druid journey or their Druid faith a religious faith, and some people consider it more in terms of a spiritual path. Right. And then other people, right. you, 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 you'll you find other people who consider their Druidry as um, their kind of philosophy of life or something like that, or their way of life. Um, and then you get rather interesting kind of shadings around that. You, you'll have people who uh, are by religion, say, Christian, but they really appreciate the Druid philosophy and ideas. Right. And so they might call themselves Christian Druids, for instance, or Druid Christians. So you can get that the whole range, you know. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, um, that's good to know. It seems like in, in the Obad material, um, it seems that uh, Obad... Uh, for those of you who don't know out there, Obad is the uh, acronym for the Order of Bards, Ovates, and Druids. Um, it seems very open to any religion, whereas some other organizations are you know, only pagans, nobody else. So uh, it's definitely interesting to hear that take from you. Appreciate it. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. I think, I think you know, that kind of dogmatism and limitation is really problematic, as we've seen, you know, historically and even contemporary contemporaneously now you know the kind of conflicts and difficulties that 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 engenders you know so so an inclusive generous open-hearted kind of approach seems to us the most sensible and positive good 
That makes sense to me personally. Uh, hmm. To me, whatever whatever works is good. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, one of your books, um, The Druid Mystery. Is I'm very much enjoying reading it. Um, I'll link it below. I think it's extremely accessible for someone new to druidry or just want to get an idea of what it is. Um, right. Two things in particular, you know, resonated with me while, while reading the book. Uh, one of them was how you gave multiple theories of the origin of the druids and or even further back to the proto druids um the whole smorgasbord i found that most books i look at about druidry either only give the author's preferred um theory or the cup a couple of theories or this gloss over them um you really went all out and uh you know explained a bunch of different theories and i found that very helpful and i think you know any reader who's relatively new would find that helpful because there's so much misinformation out there and on the internet. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so my question to you is you now I'm, I'm a little bit of, I don't want to say conspiracy theorist, but I, I like the things that are out there and I, I enjoyed mm -hmm. the theories about Atlantis, which I had heard different versions of, but I'm just curious. Um, have you seen the um, research put out by Keystone university in Ireland? um no uh, about what uh, about about uh, atlantis they theorize that ireland itself is atlantis re re really and who's who where 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 do, where do you find that research um it's keystone university um I'll, I'll i'll email you a link and i'll also if anyone else interested put it um below um right. they have a presentation they uh, have on youtube it's it's probably almost three hours long, and they also have one more summary video that's maybe a half an hour. Um, yeah. you know, a lot of their evidence could be circumstantial, but at least they're connecting dots and giving mm. reasons not to saying, oh, there's a theory that it's this. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, Great. Great. And the, the other thing I uh, really resonated with me um, in, in the book was the idea that Druidry never really ended, that mm. even in the dark period, it was still part of the people embedded in them. And th that just rings so true with me. That's how I feel. That's kind of how I went down this road to begin with, um, trying to get a little better relief on mental health issues like anxiety and, and right. depression. I thought yeah. about where was I most happy and at peace, and it was in Ireland. And I thought about what was in Ireland. And there's something in the ground, in, in the in the, buildings and the people mostly that just mm. I think it just carried through and they not even people don't even, even realize it they do things that their grandparents did and their grandparents did and don't even know where it comes from mm. and I just really feel like that's it, it, that druidry is embedded in people whether they realize it or not I I think that's great I mean you know you you point to the mental health uh and well-being kind of issue there I think that's so important that if you understand the world of meaning and the kind of deeper world that's behind the kind of world of outer appearances if you understand the the, the power of that and the importance of that that's like the kind of bedrock uh that it kind of feeds the soul and if you if you don't want to be so kind of romantic about it you can say well it you know it, it, it gives you hope and it you know it's intellectually interesting and emotionally interesting and so on uh but but from that flows mental well-being and the reason why there's so much anxiety and depression in the world at the moment one of the reasons is because we've cut ourselves off from these these this kind of bedrock right. you know and what i hear you saying to me is you know you for you 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 connect into that bedrock by through druidry and through ireland and thinking about uh, connecting with irish culture and people and so on right. and that 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 helps you to be real in that sense and to be and to be grounded in something more than just the kind of crazy consumer society world that we're surrounded in you know? yeah yeah absolutely i mean i remember when i went to the ancestral homelands of my irish ancestors and you know they didn't move around much that was the same location for probably you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred years, yeah. And just being on that land, I remember just sitting there mm. on the grass, just looking around, and I felt such a connection. You know, and, I, and I'm the skeptic here, but I just yeah. felt like yeah. there, there was something there, like that I was actually a part of the land. 
Um, Fabulous. And, and I Fabulous. really think, you know, there really is something to that. So when people say that, oh, Druidry was, went, went away in and, and this time and, you know, the, the Romans pre- pretty much got rid of it, you know, I, I never really believe that. Yeah, yeah. Because it also depends on where you think you know the true kind of uh kind of source of druidry is if it's if it's if you believe in a spiritual world then that spiritual world is be by definition as it was kind of beyond time in our everyday sense of the term it's it's like a bubbling spring that's bubbling up into the world of time and space and historical time all the rest of it but it's it's beyond that or it's deeper than that so so it, it never dies in that sense you know right the way I understand it, I, I tend to agree with you. But what do I know? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the four month druid here. <laughs> Maybe now we could talk a little about um, Obad, since I know you've been involved with it for, for so long. I mean, has a great mm. track record in the longevity and quality of learning materials. Mm. Um, in all fairness, it's it's expensive. Probably not expensive for what you get, but just in general terms, it's it's, it's pretty um, expensive. Um, mm. I, I found it so far to be a, a great base knowledge um, mm. and, and seeds for thought. Um, mm. Just because I'm the skeptic, I would tell anybody, you know, be skeptical, look at sure. it, don't just take it for fact. And it's great that you mm. guys give the practicum so you can actually try things out for yourself and experiment. Because the fact mm. is, not everything's going to work for everybody. Mm. Um, so uh, I've been I've been enjoying Obad. Is there anything in particular that? Um, you like to expand upon about Obad? Well, you know, just to say really that it's it's developed into this incredible community of people all over the world who uh, who uh, you know have such a diverse range as we you know we talked about the diversity earlier. You know, so right. you'll have Christians there, you'll have Druids, you'll have you know you have people who you know with different pagans and so on, and and and. Um, you really can travel the world. I mean, I've I've spent the last thirty years going around the world to the states and Australia and New Zealand and so on, and just meeting great people uh, who are involved in this. And the, and the other thing is, it's not just one type of person. You know, it's the whole range in terms of age, you know, interests and so on. And that's 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 lovely. It's very refreshing, very open-minded bunch of good people. You know, who seem drawn to it. Yeah, it's definitely a, a good thing. I mean, it, it definitely gives a, that positive, pleasant vibe to me. I mean, mm, I don't great. want knocking any other Georgia organizations, but it, some of them give a different kind of vibe. Um, mm. But I, I like I, I like the way Obad presents itself and uh, um, and this, this the way it interacts with the, the people who are um, members. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, Obad's pretty expensive. Um, for great. Thing it offers many many free um, resources information on the website uh, druidry.org and, and I'll put a link in, down below for that as well. Um, for the person who uh, can't quite um, afford to start Obad um, and is exhausted, the resources on the druidry.org website. Um, I was wondering if you had any recommendations for them as to what path to go down um, to not get led astray so to speak into nonsense um i know when i was starting and i and i googled um druidry old bob was the first hit hmm. the next i don't know how many other hits were for video game druids and yeah. Dungeons and dragons druids yeah yeah that's right yeah 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 well you know the other thing is if if people really want to follow the training and they don't have the funds to do it they can email us and explain their circumstances mm-hmm. we can enter into dialogue with them i mean you know uh and as as you say there's 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 you know i do a i do a broadcast every monday called tea with a druid mm-hmm. that has mm-hmm. over you know 230 episodes wow. online on the youtube channel um ema burke who's the chief of the order now who's in ireland mm-hmm. she does in-depth conversations with members of the order that go on for two hours wow. every third <laughs> and and you know that there's gradually a collection of those conversations building up we have the orders podcast which is monthly yep, dave a, the bard <laughs> dave the bard that's right you know that's like 
I can't remember how long it is, but it's a long program. It's like 90 minutes of music and interviews and talks and so on. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of lot of material that is is available. But if if people are interested in training, they can email us and say, hey, you know, we we have various staged payment plans for people to spread it out to make it easier for them and so on. You know. Okay. Um... Another question I had, which we kind of already went over, was just, you know, where my research was going. And you, I think you seem to agree that um, there definitely could be something in Druidry to help mental health. Um, hmm. I'm specifically looking, you know, back at ways and practices. Could this be simple as how 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 they gardened or whatever back yeah. whenever that, you know, maybe there was something in it, something, you know mental health wise that 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 would help it you know i I, yeah. I just don't know but um did you have any other thoughts about that um sure there's a there's a um i can i can maybe give you a link i wrote a, a piece recently about um the mental health um benefits of druidry no oh, wow uh, I'll, yeah. I'll 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 send over to you uh Great. you can a link um but basically uh you know what what druidry does is is um help us to reconnect at a number of, of levels what what tends to happen with mental well-being is that the more we feel isolated and separated and disconnected uh the more unwell we feel so what 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 tends to happen with mental well-being is we we start to disconnect say from fellow humans, because, you know, we have some difficult relationships and some suffering and challenges and rejections and so on. And so we, we, you know, we kind of shut off from people around us. And then, you know, we shut off from the natural world. Uh, so we don't go out so much in nature. And, you know, and, and we start to kind of shut down really. And, and mental, well, m mental well-being is characterized by kind of connections with other people, connections with the natural world connections with a sense of meaning in life so what druidry does is it gives you a kind of a, philosoph a philosophy or a framework or perspective where you start to get a sense of meaning right. and that plugs you into the kind of the world of meaning if you like and then it plugs you into into nature as you know you know very much so you know working with the elements and uh encouraging you to go outdoors and to connect with trees and plants and so on so you get the, that kind of, and then in the various kind of social events and comings, you know, coming togethers that we have in the order, you know, people are helped to relate to each other and connect to each other. So that sort of thing is happening. And then at another level, what's happening is because at the heart of Druidry, you have the celebration of the eight festivals, right. you know, the and the equinoxes and so on. You're, you're starting to connect to the natural world and the passing of the seasons and the changing weather and the, the changing levels of light uh, that, that, that we're receiving. Um, and there's, there's by, 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 by celebrating these festivals, thinking about them, tuning into them, it's about every six weeks or so, it gives you a sense of um, containment and of uh, way marks. There's a there's a great photograph. If you uh, want some amusement for 10, 15 minutes online, <laughs> if you, you Google into YouTube, uh, what do you Google? Something like uh, Lindisfarne, Lindisfarne, yeah. L-I-N-D-I, yeah. Yeah. which is a monastery, which is like on an island that floods every day. There's a kind of tide and you can drive across to the monastery. But if you miscalculate, uh, the tide comes in. <laughs> and so there are these photographs of people kind of driving across or walking across and then uh, we shouldn't laugh really should we because you know it's kind of tricky for them it's not it's not they don't die or anything but they you know they get trapped because right. the water comes in. you see so you have these videos on youtube of people saying oh my god the sea's coming you know and it and and they get they get uh flooded um and so what they've got is they've got a series of posts in the sand literally mm -hmm. posts so as you walk across to the island, if the water starts to come in, you can all you have to do is just get to the next post, just get to the next post, get to the next post, and then you'll be on the island. Don't worry, just keep keep going. And and life is a bit like that, particularly when you're under stress, when your mental health is under stress. Uh, that 
you know, there's just the future heading out before you and you don't know what you don't know what's going to happen and that there's no kind of markers there might be a birthday or you might have christmas or the new year or something right. like that or your your annual holiday off work or something like that but basically it's just a continuous line into the future and that's not a very comfortable way to live no absolutely not i've been there you, you, yeah yeah exactly so what what Drudry says is look What's coming up next? Well, for, for you and I, because we're into Druidry, it's like in about two weeks, we've got the winter solstice. Right. And there's a whole bunch of meanings associated with that. There are things we can do, even if we're on our, our own, you know, even if it's as simple as just turning out all the lights and sitting in darkness, and then just in, enjoying that feeling of dark, and then lighting one candle, and then reading some poetry or reading the ceremony that we have you know, uh, to symbolize the beginning of the year because then the sun is reborn at the winter solstice. And then and then there's just six weeks to go. And then we've got Imolk, mm -hmm. you know, which is Candlemas, which is a festival of candles and of lights and of the feminine in in, in, in life and so on. So every six weeks, we've got, we've got those markers, right? That, you know, that we can look forward to and we can look back and we say, you know, what did I do last winter solstice? Oh, yes, that was when that happened. And, you know... Um, so it gives us a kind of structure to our lives and a sense of a path, you know, that, that this photograph of, in, of Lindisfarne gives as well, <laughs> this sense of, you know, and we, we know that in terms of when people are under a lot of stress, you know, um, people just say, you know, take it day by day, you know, just get through today, just enjoy today and focus on today and then tomorrow will take care of itself. You know, that's when you when you're under a lot of stress. Yeah, you know, and then this this is just a little bit stretched out to every six weeks or so. You know. Yeah, that that, that make, definitely makes some sense. Uh, hmm. I'm I'm heavy into this research and trying to make connections um, where maybe you know there might not have already been. Uh, we'll see how it goes because I certainly hope to help myself and help help any anybody anybody out there who's willing to read my newsletter or watch my videos or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Um, Speaking of uh, nature, I mean, nature is a huge part of uh, Druidry, connecting with the nature and understanding that we're a part of nature, too, in reality. Um, hmm. Do you have any advice for people who maybe don't have easy access to nature or um, for someone like me who has developed such severe environmental allergies that if I look at a tree, I have a reaction? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um well, for a start, the first thing is is this fascinating like fact that our nervous systems cannot distinguish between uh, what is imagined and what is real, you know, which is why PTSD is such a problem, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, because it's because when, you know, somebody who's been in a war situation, for instance, and they have memories of, of, of conflict and, and crisis, when they say dream about that or they find themselves remembering it the body doesn't know that it's not real so all all the reactions occur in the body uh that you get under the real event so that's on the negative side but if you take that in a positive way it means that if you can work with the ability to visualize and to immerse yourself at the level of the imagination then you can derive similar benefits in other words here here i'll give you a really concrete example of this so i i work with a particular method called sophrology which is working for people with anxiety and stress and so on and 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 um when and it involves visualization to a great extent and uh when i was training we were doing an exercise where we visualized being at a beautiful beach and i knew a beach in uh, barbados the friend of mine uh had invited uh, i was had taken us to i'd given some workshops on druidry out, out in barbados so, you know this was about 10 years ago i guess and um so i knew the beach very well and i knew exactly what it looked like and all the rest of it so all through the winter i was doing these exercises every day where you go very deep and then in, the, in a very deep state of relaxation, you imagine you're there and you go through a kind of sequence of mm -hmm. you know, really imagining yourself. And, you know, it would feel wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And I'd come out feeling refreshed and relaxed and you know, really benefit. 
Then in March, after a couple of months of doing this, we actually flew out there. So suddenly I could act it out for real. Yeah. And when I was doing it for real, of course, then, you know, what happened? Well, there were the insects. There was the sun that was, <laughs> was so, so <laughs> hot that was burning me. You know, there were guys selling sunglasses, bothering you, you know, hey, do you want to buy some sunglasses? No, thank you. You know, I said, <laughs> and I, I turned to my wife, to Stephanie, and I said, isn't it funny? You know, I've been on this beach every day for the last couple of months back in the UK, and it's been it's been more <laughs> relaxing than the real thing. This is nuts. <laughs> you know, um, so so the so in terms of a situation like yours, where where you know, interacting, say, with trees can, can be problematic uh, in, in real life. That's why, you know, as you know, one of the cornerstones of, of our training at, right at the beginning is we build up this sacred grove, the idea right. of you imagine this to be beautiful clearing in the forest and you, you just allow yourself to, you know. Um, and, and as you do that, you can really take kind of um, comfort and pleasure in, in knowing that from your body's point of view, it doesn't know the difference. You could be outside or you could be back at home. It's all the various changes in your ho hormones and your neurotransmitters hmm. are occurring anyway. And so that's just straight off, straight up. That's one thing I can think that can be helpful. Okay. Yeah, that, that definitely sounds good. And kind of what I've been doing. Um, yeah. For lack of a you know, better way up to this point, yeah. um, you just get sometimes you get the uh, originalist or constructionist. No, that's not right. You have to go in a grove made of these trees and those yeah, yeah. trees. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. So um, the meditations, I, I guess it would be that you um, doing your um, sophrology um, classes. Is that very different than the um, Druidry meditations? Um, well, no, the, the, the difference is with, with Druidry and the meditations that we do, um, they are, they kind of go straight into the spiritual, if you like, the, into Druidry. Right. And you, you imagine you're in the sacred grove and you have encounters there and experiences there and so on. With Sophrology, because Sophrology was developed by a psychiatrist um, uh, 60 years ago, and uh, it's a kind of method that was designed for everybody. And he worked a lot with people with PTSD coming out of the Spanish Civil War and so on. And and um, uh, the the technique, so the technique has no spiritual or relig religious kind of dressing on it or connotations on it. And, and essentially, you know, at the heart of it is a particular method involving tension and release so it's that you do kind of specific routines where you scrunch up all your muscles as you breathe in okay. and then you know you breathe out and release all your muscles and so on and and it's and it's ways it's like a kind of an enhanced mindfulness and then you drop into a visualization um which is kind of not a spiritual one it's just you know you visualize being in a beautiful place or whatever and then, and then the idea is you can go forward into the future or backwards into the past, or you can rehearse things. So, for instance, one of one of its ways of working with people who find it hard to sleep is you just imagine yourself. You just see yourself getting ready for bed and brushing your teeth, right. getting bed and you just see yourself sleeping well for a whole night, waking up refreshed in the morning, and you just over a few minutes, you just imagine that as a kind of speeded up movie, you know. Uh, and then you come out of this very deeply relaxed state. And the idea is, you know, you do this every day and you're programming your mind, essentially, so that when you actually do physically lie down in bed, you know, your mind has got this kind of movie that it's been running day after day oh, okay. and it drops you into it. It definitely sounds interesting, too. I'll have to see if I can find the time at some point, um, take some of your classes on the sophrology then. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Since yeah. I know that uh, we're, we're running a little short in time, I just have uh, one final question for you, um, mm -hmm. which is, do you have any other general advice for anybody like me who is, who is getting started in Drury or is thinking about it? Mm. Yeah, so so um, I, think, I think 
you know, we live at this incredibly kind of privileged time in, in the, the story of humanity, really, where we have every kind of spiritual and personal development uh, offering available to us. You know, virtually anything, any kind of path, Buddhism, Druidry, meditation, mindfulness, you know, all these things are available, you know, just on our screens immediately. Right. <laughs> Uh, a whole host of them and and that presents an interesting challenge because on the one hand it's wonderful it's fantastic but on the other hand it's kind of overwhelming because where do you start you know should i get into mindfulness should i get into sophrology should i get into druidry should i do a course in buddhism you know whatever it is you know so so and the so the only i, I think you know the only way to go really is to is to really follow your nose you know your intuition your curiosity you know mm -hmm. and it's like you you found that when you googled you know druidry you found you got you know a number of different websites and so on and and if you kind of think back to the process that was going on in your head you were kind of reading stuff and looking at these different websites and you were making kind of judgments weren't you you were saying oh, that's kind of a bit too wacky or that's you know, oh, that's the gaming druidry thing, you know, because it's a whole <laughs> world of kind of games and stuff, you know. And then and then you you chose something that felt interesting to you and um yeah, interesting and in that that you you so you took it a step further. <clears throat> you know, and 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 that's the way you know, the great thing about the internet as well, it's not like you're having to go to a meeting downtown right with a bunch right. of strangers. And you think, oh my God, you know, maybe these people are crazy. I don't know, you know, uh, you know, uh, you can with the internet, you can always just, you know, hit the button and just get out of there, you know. Uh, so, so, um, so, I my advice would <coughs> to anybody would be really just to have have faith in your discernment, you know, because there's there's a whole load of rubbish out there in, in every. Absolutely. Yeah. every topic every topic there's a whole bunch of rubbish and there's and there's, there's there's a bunch of good stuff you know and and um we believe you know obviously we believe we we're always trying to make ourselves the best you know we we regularly sort of look at what we're doing and talk about it and 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 try we just try to do the best you know and and um and and yeah yeah so i would just encourage and as you know yourself you know you can you can kind of tippy toe into it and just you know you you can um you know there's a sort of introductory package that you can get which gives you a taster or you can just do like a monthly commitment you know and then pull out at any time if you want to uh so uh, um there's a beautiful kind of line we you know there is an initiation ceremony if you want if you feel yes i want to do this initiation ceremonies are a really kind of symbolic at one level ways of saying yes i'm committing to this and i'm 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 you know i want to be a part of this way you know but you can always get out there's a lovely phrase we in in in, in the ceremonies that we do which says you know, as in freedom uh you joined so in freedom may you leave right should ever you your guides or stars ordain so that's a beautiful line i think because it means yeah, you, know, very you, nice. you came to us in freedom you can leave in freedom you know you know you hear stories of groups that kind of um suck you in and, and keep, keep hold you tight and don't let you out kind of cults i suppose uh you know and that's definitely not you know what what uh obod is you know? right uh, yeah um i just want to point out for the audience um you know the old bod learning material can be done online um, through uh, paper mailings or both. Um, but as Philip was mentioning, there are ceremonies and whatnot, and you can um, actually participate in person. What are they called? Groves, I think. Groves, yeah, they're about two hundred. Yeah, groups around the world, and the, yeah. the smaller ones, I think, is seed groves or something. Like seed, that. seed groups, seed groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, if you do want that personal contact and and that maybe more of a mentorship type of thing um, in person. Um, it is available if there's a location near you. Um, the nearest one to me, unfortunately, is uh, about 30 miles away in Manhattan, which might as well be three hours away. So I have not made that attempt to go there. Maybe uh, myself or some other people might start a seed grove on Long Island. That would be great. 
but um, there, there are many ways to access the OBOD information and participate. Um, so just be clear for that, for anybody interested in OBOD. Yes, and, and the other thing, of course, you remember, Mike, is you, you, you have the option to have a, um, a mentor. Right. So when you start the training, you can you can you can you can send in an email saying yes, I'd like a mentor, and then we hook you up. We've got fifty mentors around the world, uh, and we hook you up with one of them. And they're people who've been through the whole training, so they they act like a kind of like a companion, really, or just someone to ask questions of and uh, right. you know get advice from and so on. Great, makes sense. Um, well, just about out of time, I would like to uh, thank Philip for joining us today. Um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, just for the audience out there, just so you know, well, you, you do know already that I'm just starting out down this path and trying to share what I'm learning as I'm going um, and what I'm researching. But I'm basically a no one right now. And, you know, I approached Philip and he was so generous with his time and more than happy to speak with me. Philip has been great and, um, and, and willing to help me out and to provide the valuable information to everybody out there. So I just really can't thank you enough. Um, and you're welcome back anytime. Uh, maybe go into something a little further in depth. And I should also mention too that Philip has an extremely busy schedule. Um, I was just amazed that he was willing to carve out some time for me. Um, well, thank you again. Well, Mike, thank thank you so much for in inviting you. And and uh, you know, uh, I wish you every success with the podcast as well. I think I you know really hope it's really successful. Great. Well, thanks again, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.